Hi everyone, welcome to the timingresearch.com Analyze Your Trade, episode number 135 for August 11th, 2020. My name is David Kosmeter. I'm the creator of timingresearch.com and today we will be analyzing your trade ideas. So we are uh, uh, broadcasting and recording this at 4 p.m. Eastern and uh, uh, today I have arranged for Jake Bernstein to join us. You're seeing his screen right now and the option professor is back to moderate. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him. Sounds great. Thanks, uh, David. And uh, welcome to everybody who's tuning in. Uh, today, we've got Jake Bernstein, uh, who is a very uh, longtime uh, educator and uh, market participant. And so he's going to give an insight on what he sees. And there's a lot of things going on in stocks, bonds, commodities, and everything else. So uh, we're going to try to cover the gauntlet here. Uh, but before we get started, for newcomers who are uh, unaware, uh, Jake, a little background on yourself and uh, uh, what your company's doing. Sure, Jim. I've been trading for 52 years. A uh, real trader. I trade practically every day. Not necessarily day trades, but short term. I've written about 45 books. I've lost track. Been on all the major TV shows, including Wall Street Week, CNBC, and so forth. I published three or four newsletters. Most of my research is bought by large commercial hedge firms and so forth. And I'm a completely technical trader. I don't use fundamentals at all. So everything I do is fact-backed and rules-based. I do a lot of seasonal work, and uh, that should be enough to cover the subject. Yeah. You're, uh, the letter that I used to get uh, was called, I think, Commodity Perspectives? It was called Weekly Commodity Training. The Commodity Perspectives was a chart service out of Chicago, Jim. Oh, okay. I, I, can, I just remember your name was at the top, and then uh, I thought it was a Commodity Perspective, but it was a Commodity something else, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, great. Um, like I say, today uh, we had a big uh, market uh, up move yesterday and today. And then at the end of the day, sometimes this happens, it's called Turnaround Tuesday. Uh, they hit the market pretty hard at the end of the day. So uh, we've got a list of stocks that we are going to go over. And uh, why don't we uh, get into that? And then about halfway through, we'll start going off uh, the highway here and get into some of the commodities and things like that. But <clears throat> in fairness to the people who sent in their uh, stocks, let's start out with Apple. And we've got Apple showing on the screen. So what I try to do in my work is not only give you my opinion, but I want you to see that my opinion is based on fact. And hopefully whoever is here will learn something as well as getting my opinion or your opinion. So sure. What we're looking at here, Jim, is the moving average channel, my methodology. At the top of the screen, we've got the price bars. The red line is a 10-day moving average of the highs. The green line is an 8-day moving average of the lows. I've got a momentum indicator over here for divergence. And over here, I've got the, green, the blue line, Williams accumulation distribution. We've taken a moving average of that blue line, a 57 period moving average of the blue line, which gives us our trigger. So Apple turned bullish right over here by giving us two complete consecutive price bars above the top of the channel and then confirmed a buy when Williams went above its moving average. So the trend turned bullish at that time. Every excursion to the bottom of the channel, which is support, has been a buying opportunity. Over here, we had one complete day below the bottom of the channel. Two days below, <clears throat> with Williams below its moving average, would give us a sell, but it hasn't happened. The interesting thing about the channel is this. When the channel gets very narrow, as it did over here, mm -hmm. it's a leading indicator of a potential decline to support. And that decline happened today with Apple down eight bucks. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean we're in a bear trend, simply means normal and reasonable reaction to support which is what I see in Apple. And again, let me say one more thing, if I'm not hogging, hogging the mic. It depends on whether you're a trader or an investor. As a trader, you're using the daily chart. As an investor, you're using the weekly chart, which is distinctly different because the weekly chart says, no interruption in the bullish trend. If you want to be a buyer, you're buying at support. The bottom of the channel or anywhere in the channel is support. And that's shown by these two numbers which are specific buy points for long-term and intermediate-term support. So now I'll turn it back to you, Jim. 
Well, I was just going to add that, uh, you know, I've been suspicious of Apple because obviously this parabolic move because they're going to go four to one split. Uh, the 200 day moving average is at 300 bucks about uh, this thing got to 450. That's 50 percent above the 200 day on almost a two trillion dollar stock. That's very extended. And it's not doesn't take much uh, to get it to pull back a little bit. 50 day average is coming in around 370. And it looks to me like you've got a number right there at around 360. That would yeah. be a very interesting uh, place to be able to pick it up if we did get that kind of a pullback. You mean a, a weekly chart, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, if you're patient and, uh, you know, the bloom comes off the rose, because one thing, uh, I know you're a technician, but one thing they did mention was that there's going to be a delay on the I-12. And uh, if a delay turns into a further delay, you know, that could be the, uh, that could be a, a situation that could alter the short-term bullishness as well. True enough, true enough. Well, the next guy coming up here is why, why? And I'll ask you why we're looking at it. No, why, why? <laughs> I wish I can tell you why. <laughs> Let's go to the daily chart. Joy. And here we are. So <clears throat> interestingly enough, the chart, turn bullish. And here's the daily buy trigger right over here. Two complete consecutive bars above the top of the channel, confirmed by Williams above its moving average. And when that happens, you buy the bottom of the channel. So you would now be along this stock. The trend has turned bullish. The first target is the red line, which specifically is 8097. Then after that, we have several other targets for the methodology, but the, the stock has turned bullish. Now here's the opposite situation. Turned bearish with multiple bars below the bottom of the channel. Let me see, what's the name of this stock? So, joy. You know what? Oh, Joy. You know, pardon my ignorance, but what do they do? Not I'm, not sure. I'm not certain. I don't have a uh, thing here. Hold yeah. On. But the trend has turned bullish on that work now. And interestingly enough, the way it resisted, the downtrend today is very impressive. Yeah, it looks like it's having the garden variety pullback as long as it holds above, like uh, on the longer term chart, probably 60 or so. There it is right there. It's actually above 70. So on the longer term chart, it hits support for the last three or four weeks in a row. Still in a yeah. very strong bull trend. Well, it's a Chinese video based social network. So uh, I don't know if there's any additional risk. Uh, so watch out. <laughs> yeah, with, with all the uh, who shot John going out there. Yeah, the government's going to want 30% of the profits. Yeah, <laughs> on any deal. Uh, WMI mm -hmm. is the next one on the list here. Here we and go. They are uh, Windows Management Instrument. Hey, hey uh, Jake. Yeah. Jake, uh, uh, Arnold from the live audience is asking what the lower green line is on your. On the your lower, chart. sure. Let's let's do that. Let's cover that first. The lower green line is. Three period momentum of the MACD. In other words, we're taking the MACD 9 and 18, and we're taking that number and we're running a three period momentum of that number, which gives us our divergence indicator. And as we show some of the charts, I'll show how that divergence indicator works, but that's what it is. And if Arnold's not clear, you can write me an email and I'll, I'll clarify. So, what were we doing before? Uh, the next one is a uh, Walmart WMT. W WMT. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Another secret stock. Yeah. Here we go. Weekly chart. Bearish. Turned bearish right over here, with two bars below the bottom of the channel. Williams below its moving average sell the top of the channel. So Walmart is in a bearish trend and would be profitable now if you sold the top of the channel. And that is the daily chart. The weekly chart, if you're an investor, hey, you're waiting to buy it at the bottom of the channel. So remember, obviously the perspective as a trader is very different than the perspective as an investor. Yeah, the moving averages are actually kind of converging a bit, 123 on the 50 day and 120 on the I mean, at least it's not, you know, nine miles away from its moving averages like a lot of the tech, you know? Correct. Um, next guy up is uh, Workday. Is that W-O-R-K? Yeah. Okay. There we go. No, that's Slack. Workday is... Um, no, W-D-A-Y. W-D-A-Y, right. 
One moment, please. This was aired out a little bit today, but not that much. But it looks like there's a sl there's a slippery slope it's on. Would you say the chart looks a little like a slippery slope? <laughs> it, it certainly does. And let me show you, let me demonstrate the divergence for you. When we made a new high in price, right over here, I'm going to put a line there. So just let me get right over there and put a line on the chart. Hang on one second. But we did not make a new high in momentum in the MACD. So there was your divergence. Higher high in price, lower high in the indicator. We then sell when we break the lowest point on the indicator. So let me put that on the screen. So that lowest point would be here. And the sell would come right over here and we would be short to stop right now. So there's divergence. And that would be the daily. And again, the perspective, weekly chart, totally different situation. Mm -hmm. Weekly charts, the buy. So on a what weekly, it looks like just pretty much it's having a pullback and uh, yeah, 165 area probably would be. Uh, yep, reasonable normal. Well, 177 is support right now. If it holds, yeah. If it holds, yeah. yeah. And the target uh, would be one in 190. All right. Well, we're going to have all this uh, 5G stuff coming out, and uh, people love Verizon, but uh, this particular person wanted to look at telephone. Also, T-Mobile seems to be quite popular lately. So you want to look at at and is that correct? Yeah, that, they want to look at T. Yeah, I got it. They want to look at the one with more debt, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly in a downtrend. <clears throat> following the strategy beautifully, by which I mean, there's our two complete consecutive bars below the channel. There's our confirmation of the sell. There's our opportunity to sell the top of the channel. Hits our first target with another opportunity coming up to go short. So right now, it's clearly a short on the weekly chart and on the daily chart, it has just turned bullish. So again, take your pick. If you want to trade from the daily, no problem but you have to wait for the opportunity to buy the bottom of the channel. We know what that bottom of the channel number is for tomorrow. It's 29.67 and that would mm -hmm. be a buy. So again, different perspective if you're a short-term trader or an intermediate-term trader as opposed to that. Yeah, it would be nice to see this thing get back above 33 and get some room between uh, the support and where the prices are, you know? True enough. But, um, you know, this uh, thing that jumps out here is, I don't know what's more ridiculous, um, Exxon paying out over 8% in a zero interest rate environment or a telephone paying almost 7% in a zero interest rate environment. <laughs> That's right. I and mean, these guys can't find a better thing to do with the money than to pay out. You know what I mean? Exactly. exactly. But uh, anyway, that's the kind of company it is that they, they, you know, people go to them for that money. Uh, yep. W is uh, Wayfair. And Wayfair has been very, uh, very much on a run. Yeah. That's where you get stuff cheap, right? And no delivery charges, no shipping yeah. charges, right? So it's and I think they take Bitcoin too, don't they? I or no, that's overstock, do. I think maybe. No, that you're right, that was overstock, correct. Yeah. So here is the chart. It's been on a tear. It turned bullish on the daily chart all the way back here in April of this year. So it's been in a bull trend ever since here. The weekly chart, a thing of great beauty as well turning bullish right after the COVID crisis and still bullish now. So there's not much I can say about it, except on the daily chart, there is a little problem. And remember, it's a setup, not a trigger. The problem being specifically that when you're making new highs in price, you also want to be making new highs in the momentum indicator, mm -hmm. which is not the case. So it's, it's a warning. That's all it is, not a trigger to sell simply a warning. Beautiful trading stock has hit the bottom of the channel numerous times and come back every single time. And as a day trader's uh, a dream because it was as oh, low yeah. as 283 today, it was as high as 324 today, and it went home at 309. So you certainly, and it has a 24% short interest. Right. And with stocks like this, you're much better off day trading the options at the money or in the money options than you are trading the stock. Yeah. 
according to my screen here, they're losing uh, seven bucks a share on a 52 week basis. That's so, right. So uh, they, they must have that accountant that says, how do we lose money on every trade? How do we uh, do it? Uh, we do it through volume or something like that? Exactly, creative accounting. Creative accounting. Uh, kind of like Kodak is probably going to have to talk about. Right? Well, that Kodak. Uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, nobody must have gotten caught in that uh, storm, the Kodak storm. It's not on the list. Huh? Well, a whole lot of probably what happened was a whole lot of Robin Hood traders got caught in there. Too embarrassed to say it. Probably. Well, there's a VIX uh, deal here, and obviously the VIX popped today with this kind of turnaround, and it was kind of dead in the water. So VXX is the next one up, and uh, I'm sure people are trying to figure out if it's. Uh, if it's going to have another big move to the upside. Yeah, there it is. It's still in a downtrend. It went yeah. in a downtrend quite some time ago. Yeah. Uh, you know, look, uh, it was the, the dead cat bounce. You know, mm -hmm. yep. if, you, if, you throw, if you throw a dead cat off the top of the Empire State Building, it's going to bounce when it hits the ground. That's what happened today. I'm not a big fan of the VIX. <clears throat> don't like trading it. Don't enjoy trading it. But hey, if you like it, you had a move today. Well, I have to say somebody's trading it because it did 34 million uh, shares of volume. So mm -hmm. it's probably being used quite a bit as a hedge or something like that. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, all right. STM. And uh, this, was, this one was touted by uh, some guy on TV or radio or in the print um, as being something very necessary for the future, you know, oh, technology. Yeah. And uh, I remember he was touting it at 13, 14, 15. And uh, mm -hmm. then, of course, it collapsed during the crash. And now it's yep. kind of come back up to where it was. Yeah, the trend is still up. It's still a buy. I don't see anything in particular to get very excited about on this stock. However, we did make a new high for the move without a new high in the divergence indicator, which is a negative. Mm -hmm. In other words, we made this new high right over here. And you'll notice that the momentum indicator went all the way back here, still not making a new high. So it's a negative, not, not the kind of stock that I enjoy trading, but uh, it's definitely in an uptrend. Well, here's one coming up that's very interesting because of the size of it and the, uh, I, you know, it seems to me after I read some numbers uh, from this, uh, I think the gentleman who runs it is named Owens or something like that, or, or Evans. Which uh, he had an, uh, Baba, B-A-B-A. -B -A. Oh, Alibaba. Yeah, he was on Bloomberg with that David, uh, um, the guy from Carlisle. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, they had an interview, and the guy was going through all the, the size of the company and what they're into and this, that, and the other. And it just sounded like a, a very strong long-term story. And it went all the way up to 270, and then it came back down here because of all the to-do going around. But uh, I was wondering if somewhere between 230 or 220 and 240 or something like that, or even right here, might not be a bad place to uh, take a look. According to the rules of the moving average channel, it is a buy at the end of the day today. You've got two consecutive days below the channel, but you don't have Williams below its moving average, which means it's a buy today. Target, the top of the channel, was at 257 or something. Yeah. And so we've got some news that Biden has picked Kamala Harris as a running mate. Oh, has he done that? Just just came out on, on CNBC. Oh, okay. okay yeah, so well, I think he probably figured she's a little bit more mainstream as far as out there and people know her name. The Susan Rice was kind of like going into the old uh, treasure chest, look, you know, get, and grabbing somebody out of uh, yesterday. Right. You know? Well, we'll see where that gets, Joe. Yeah, yeah. But at least, uh, like I say, at least we know who it is. It's not uh, who's behind the curtain, you know. Let's see if the market's reacting. One second, here we go. Turn the S and P. <clears throat> nope, hasn't resumed trading yet. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, I think that's okay. about a half now. Yeah. Okay. So uh, after Baba, uh, the next guy on the list here is Square, and of course Square's been going through the roof. But today, what did it do? Square. Oh, is... hardly down a point. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, it's a beautiful chart. Mm. Buy at the end of the day today, buy at the bottom of the channel, every opportunity. Is the chart looks very similar to Apple. Let's also, look at PayPal to see if the PayPal's pretty much the same uh, deal. Is it PPYL? Uh, PYPL. PYPL, right. There we go. PYPL, let me try that again. 
Here you go. Hey, pal. Mm -hmm. Similar chart. One bar below the bottom of the channel. Means it's a buy at the end of the day today or on the opening tomorrow. Should come back into the channel. Notice the narrowing of the channel over here preceded mm -hmm. this decline by a couple of days as it did over here when the channel got narrow and preceded this decline right over here. So the channel gives us a leading indicator, but the stock is still bullish. And one last one on this one, the one that I use, iPay, and it's uh, the letter I and then P-A-Y. Then you get the whole basket of everybody. Yeah, here you go. And this thing's been a winner. Yeah, still in a beautiful bull trend. Yeah. And one thing I want to, I don't want to forget. <clears throat> Do we have any questions on the on our list for today? Uh, mining mining stocks or gold or anything? Uh, I'm looking here and I'm seeing Microsoft and I'm looking at, no, there's not a, uh, K, I don't know what KN does. I know KL is Kinross. But, uh, Let's look at GDX. Yeah, okay. Let's jump over. Here we yeah. go. GDX. The question, of course, in everyone's mind is with all this explosive moves in gold, what do we do today? Well, the answer is really simple. I think we covered this earlier in the session. If you go to the weekly chart and you're looking to establish a long position, the bottom of the channel, which as of the end of the day today is a 37.93, would be the place to buy it, assuming it gets down to that level tomorrow. On a longer term basis, is it possible it gets down um, into the 30 to 34 range? Then we go to the monthly chart. We've got support at 28, yeah. 28 and change. Yeah. Yeah. That could happen if the unwind on the correction gets a little hairy. Yeah, and you know, look, you sit down and watch some TV, you're going to see, like last night, I saw 9 between 5 p.m. my time and 9 p.m. my time. I saw seven ads for gold bullion, <laughs> gold coins, silver bullions. And here's the thing that's so funny. They show the coin, it's a beautiful coin. It's got a picture of an eagle on it. It's been endorsed by the former treasurer of the United States. It's brilliant, it's 0 .99999 silver, et cetera, et cetera. And it's got 0 0.5 ounces of silver. Silver is selling at 24 bucks an ounce. It's got, it's got 0 .5, 0 0.5 ounces of silver in it. And they're selling the thing for 39 bucks. And if you're it, it, and a limit of five, quantity of five, that's it. Yeah. So you're you know you're paying a hundred percent markup, plus you're gonna pay six percent commission when you're ready to sell it. And maybe even a sales tax on top. On top of that, right? Yeah. So on the on the metals here, we're getting the pullback. At, uh, nobody really thought would ever happen, and then uh, basically. Uh, Somewhere between 37 and 28 uh, yep, is, a, yep. is a neighborhood where it may stop. Because, uh, yeah, my uh, feeling was, again, with the, in, the yields rising, it has closed that negative yield gap. And I think that had a big effect on this. But the printing, you know, probably has no end in sight because we've already printed this much for about 90 days. Now, uh, the, the guy at Bridgewater uh, was saying, you know, there's no, um, there's no rule that this isn't going to go on for like eight more quarters. You know what I mean? True, true. Because the unemployment rate is, is going to be, they, they believe it's going to be stubborn. And if the unemployment rate's stubborn, the less income, less spending, you know, they're going to have to make up that gap. Yeah, there are some really good economic projections based on the deficit for three thousand yeah. for three thousand dollar gold. Yeah, but I think the path between here and three thousand dollars is going to be paved with a lot of a lot of landmines. Mm -hmm. You got to be careful. Uh, in a previous show, I recommended a stock, Southern Peru Copper. Here's the chart. The thing that's different about copper and all the other metals is this: commercials are buying copper. They've been buying copper like it's going out of style and they've been buying it for the last year. There's been a small amount of buying in gold by commercials and that was about six months ago. But right now commercials don't want any part of the gold market because it's a beautiful hedge. They take yeah. it out of the ground for X dollars, they sell it immediately and lock in their profit automatically. Hmm. And the uh, silver uh, with the uh, commercials and commitment to traders? And Similar situation. But let me show you a real shocker as long as we're talking about this. I'm going to go to a different chart. Yeah, Check oh, this. are you going to look at platinum? I'm going to look at ta -da, Bitcoin. Okay. So here you go. This is really cool. 
So, come on, computer. Okay, here you go. Check this out. So here's Bitcoin futures. Until recently, of course, we didn't have Bitcoin futures, but now that we've got Bitcoin futures, Bitcoin is included in the commitment of traders report. So now we know what commercial activity has been in Bitcoin. Check this out, Jim, and audience. This was the first time right over here that commercials were buying Bitcoin. Who are those commercials? Banks, hedge funds, companies that take Bitcoin as, as payment. And that buying of Bitcoin, I'm gonna make this chart bigger so you can check it out. That buying of Bitcoin started right over here. In other words, the green shows that commercials are net long this market, which preceded that up move in futures. Looks like a small move, but in dollar terms, it's a huge move. And then it happened again right over here. So the minute, the very week they started buying was the start of the rally. And this is where we are right now. So right now, for the last, what, 10 or 15, 10, 10 weeks approximately, we've had the largest commercial buying of Bitcoin in the history of the Bitcoin futures market, which is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. So just wanted to show that. <clears throat> And, and on so, you know on a on a longer term basis that's uh, that's very strong. Yeah. You know when you think about it with all the digital lifestyle that's gone on, yeah, and the way that the uh, U.S. dollar is just being and all these currencies are just being printed, ridiculous. The idea of going towards the digital currency is becoming more and more feasible. True enough. You know, and especially with the millennial generation being so tech savvy. You know, they probably look at uh, Lincoln on a piece of paper as a very weird thing, you know. <laughs> That's probably true. And they're probably uh, going to want to cancel Lincoln on any money. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, why don't we just uh, hop around a little bit because uh, we've gone through quite a bit of the list. Um, let's, uh, we went over the metals. Do uh, you want to put silver up there to see uh, where that might uh, fall on its feet? Yep. I was, I was thinking it could, uh, if you were uh, fortunate, it might even pull back towards uh, where it took off from, which is 20 to 22. Well, here's the silver futures today down four bucks. Here you go. Yeah. Hold on a second. Put it on the screen. I hope those guys that sold the coin have a lot of cash for the liquidations <laughs> that are coming in. For sure. <laughs> so I mean, you, you know there's got to be somebody jake you've been around long enough to know there's somebody at a trade desk and he's his phone has got seven lines coming in and they all want their money <laughs> of course absolutely well, here's the here's the daily silver chart so what happened today we came right down to support it was a buy at the bottom of the channel yeah the risk on the bottom of the channel trade is two times the width of the channel so if we take this channel here and we double it it gets us down to about here as the risk. Yeah. So, you know, if you're okay with that kind of risk, it's a great trade. No, but if you have powder dry, it's a good place to uh, dust even, off the uh, buy tickets. Even more better, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, because the long-term picture still does look good for this stuff. But when you get this kind of parabolic short-term move with all the Johnny-come-latelys and, you know, everyone buying it as if it's money market, you know that there's going to be a shakeout. And when there is, the participation is so high that's right. And then it's, you know, a lot of these things that people don't understand, it comes down to order imbalances, you know, uh, obviously there was nobody who wanted to, um, uh, to short the thing on the way up and they were hoarding the gold, right? Of course, of course. Uh, in fact, I've, I know some people in the business with the coins and, you know, you couldn't get the coins and, um, or you couldn't get delivery off the exchange very easily. Exactly. And so, but that, you know, then the, the, the tide changes and everybody wants to get out of the movie theater and there's only the one door. You got it. You know, but uh, anyway, uh, so that's the silver and, um, and that's that. Now, uh, just one last one on the platinum to get an idea, because I was looking at long-term charts on platinum and it looked like it was actually in the initial stages of what could be a major advance in the years to come. Yeah, platinum has been underpriced relative to the other metals for a long time. Mm -hmm. Here's a platinum chart, a much better looking chart on the daily and on the monthly chart, just now beginning. Mm -hmm the start of a move. So here we have the opposite situation, by the way. We have a new low in price right over here, which was not accompanied by a new low in the momentum indicator. So right That's now, right. Yeah. yeah, the platinum has definitely made a low. And on the daily chart, as I said before, it's a very good looking chart. 
Let's switch over to the softs because I was very fortunate in the coffee market uh, when it was under 100 and then it ran up to 128. So that was a lovely place. And it was something you had mentioned, you know, yep, uh, yep. as being a good opportunity in the months ahead. So I kept my eye on it. And obviously it was a Kajing type thing. Uh, but then it's pulled back. How do we how do we look at the coffee now? Because it seems to me like it could be in a longer term uptrend. The coffee chart has started a long term move up. The daily chart, which is what we're looking at, gave us our buy trigger right over here. We have one complete bar below the bottom of the channel, which means it's a buy on the opening tomorrow, which will be sometime in the middle of the night tonight. Any risk would be two times the width of the channel. The weekly chart for investors has just now started to turn bullish. The thing that's most interesting about coffee, which I mentioned number of times in the past is what commercials are doing. Let me show you that chart. Yeah, exactly. It's a very interesting chart. Yeah, this stuff is 375 a point, so we're not talking about chump change when it goes like <laughs> That's that. That's right. Well, let, me get the, let me get the coffee chart. One moment, please. Here you go. Let me the coffee chart. Yeah, hold on one second, Jim. Yeah, the technicals that I saw was under 100 was a bargain, above 105 was add, and above 110 add a little bit more, and then yeah. blow it out when you get some kind of a parabolic like you saw. Yeah, well, here's the coffee chart. Check this out. Commercials have been buying coffee for the last two years. So right over here. The last time they had that kind of activity was right over here before this major bull market, minor bull market over here. So they know what they're doing. And we have also a cyclical low in coffee that was made a couple of months ago. So again, I, I think coffee is going much higher. Uh, it's not the kind of market that most people should be trading because it'll scare the hell out of you. Oh market. yeah, no, this is, none of this <laughs> stuff is for everybody. There's no doubt about that. But uh, yeah. you know, if it's for you, it's not bad. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, let's go over a couple more uh, softs. So, uh, sugar is trying to get through that 13 number. It, you know, if you bang on the door long enough, it does generally come down, but... Uh, and here's the sugar. And I'm always interested on in the longer term to find out what commercials are doing. And that's oh, important. yeah, yeah. It's nice to have company. So there we go. Yeah. And by the way, if I'm not mistaken, this is the longest stretch of commercial buying we've had in sugar in the entire history of the sugar futures market. So it's coming in for cyclical low. It's going to be big. Sugar, by the way, is correlated very closely with inflation. Because, you know, I mean, who needs sugar, right? So what yeah. happens is when you get inflation, you get conspicuous consumption. Sugar prices go up. And I think commercials are getting ready for that because we've got the lowest sugar prices we've had in a long time. Yeah, that, that recent uh, pullback towards the 11 mark uh, might not be a bad line in the sand. and uh, But you can see that 13. If we can get above that 13, it opens the door a little bit. Right, and by the way, Jim, there's a couple of ETFs for sugar or equivalents. There's SGG, which is a sugar ETF, and there's COSN, COSN, which is a sugar producer in South America, where, of course, they use sugar as their primary source of, of uh, energy. What were those two symbols again? COSN, COSN, uh -huh. and SGG, Sierra Golf Golf. Is there anything uh, correlating to the coffee in the market other than Starbucks? J.O. That, that is uh, something to do for coffee. Yeah, now, what about, the, what about uh, the cocoa? That is a, kind of a tough market to work with, but uh, it seems to be also in a uh, uptrending situation. Here's cocoa. Let me get the chart on here. There's a great cocoa ETF called NIB, November India Bravo. And here is cocoa. And it's coming in for a cyclical. It's been a beautiful cycle in cocoa. Let me expand it a little bit. There you go. Not perfect, but mm. coming in at the end of this year. And when it and goes, uh, the, uh, how much is this a point again? I forgot. I think it's a thousand dollars. Yeah, a thousand bucks a penny. A penny, right? The one that I'm interested in, even though I have not traded this one in years, is Tony's Juice, because I'll show you what's happening here. Commercials have been buying OJ very strongly. Check it out. Let me get rid of all this garbage here. Wow, they have been a lot this year alone, too. Yeah. They have bought more cocoa this year than ever before. 
and that's very fascinating for me. Well, that's of course, it's, uh, they're not buying it at the highs. No, that's well. They try not. They try not to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look at the last time you had some green. It, it had a nice big run, and then exactly. if this thing ever gets above the 130 uh, high, there, it'll probably accelerate. And what it's really basically saying to me is, you can expect a weather market because that's what really moves to the to juice market is weather. Yeah, that's there's one. There's one big commercial, and that's that's a Coca Cola. They own the Minimate. Okay, and Tropicana. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right, let's switch over to those agricultural products because, you know, soybeans has not been able to get out of its own way. But I'm just wondering out loud, are they just going to frustrate people in this range of eight fifty to $9 and have people throw in the towel and then run it up? That would be no surprise. A lot of, <laughs> right? A lot of the ag stocks like Archer Daniels Midland and yeah. the Andersons and Bungie Grain starting to accumulate some really good positions here because, after all, if they can buy it here and store it and sell it out later at a higher price, that's what the game's all about. There's been two important cycles in the e market, and the one shorter term cycle is bottomed right over here just in the last couple of months. But the you know the true surprise, Jim, and I think we've mentioned this before, the real surprise has been soybean oil. Yeah, exactly. We, yeah. A, a much better chart, much better oh, chart. Absolutely, yeah. here's the chart. We mentioned that last time we were on the, on the air, too. Here's the bean oil. Mm -hmm. Oh, what happened to my chart? One second. What did I do here? One second. Let's try this one. Nope. I didn't get it right, but you can see what's happening in the bean oil. Again, yeah. commercial buying tends to precede bottoms. So that's the bean oil. I was trying to get a little idea if you went, if you went back in time, you know, because as we were talking before, um, as we come out of these recessions, you know, I think these things will show you that, you know, in the 02, 03, 04 time frame, it started to take off. And in the 08, 09, 10, it had a decent run. Is that pretty true? Correct. Correct. There's your uh, 08, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, look at that. James, pretty good run. Yeah, yeah, and. What do you got, Siri talking to you over there? This is my phone. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, um, what, uh, but, uh, what about wheat? Uh, I thought wheat had actually a better uh, chart. Maybe there's something happening in wheat. Let's check it out. Here's the wheat. And there's the cycle. And look at all that commercial buying. So the commercial. Oh, you know what I wanted? To, I don't want to forget. The market that has really started to take it, take off in the ads is the cattle market. Live oh, yeah? Futures. Oh, let me show you. Because I've chart. got a buddy who's been trading hogs from the long side, and he's got profits. Yeah, both of them are starting to, to move. Here's the, let me get the cattle chart. Hang on a second. Here you go. And let's get the cows up here. October, October cattle. Daily chart, big beautiful uptrend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that thing uh, sometimes goes up to the 120, 130 area, doesn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What about those lean hogs? What do they look like? We'll go to the hogs right here. I know I've been away from the market for a while. I asked them if they've traded pork bellies. They don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, that's like since 05, right? That ended a long time ago. Yeah. Wish they did trade bellies. It was a great market. Though. In fact, here, check it out. The hogs just turned bullish. They look good, right? Classic buy signal, right? Yeah. So you got your two bars above. You got your confirmation. So you got two choices: buy it right now or wait to get into the channel, because the channel's got support. Another market that um, uh, my guy has been selling is. Um, Treasury bonds, and that started to pay off nicely. Is there um, uh, yeah. just a short-term stab there, or could he be on to a longer-term deal? The bonds have actually turned bearish, and here's a big, pretty big reaction down today. Let me get the chart up here. 
I mean, it just, it, it, you know, it's, uh, it's almost like uh, with the medals on that run. I mean, there's so much debt out there. It's record debt and junk, record debt in the government, yep. record yep. debt and sovereign. I mean, you know, at some point, <laughs> who's going to buy all this stuff? Well, sure. We know that this zero interest rate environment is not going to last forever. But uh, bottom line is, hey, it's definitely be on a short term basis turned bearish right over here today. Yeah. One of the biggest down moves you've seen in a long time. Yeah. Well, I mean, as soon as the Fed stops buying, this whole thing's done. True. You know, there's one market I don't want to forget about. Check this one out. Unfortunately, even though it's a great market, seasonally and technically, it's so thinly traded, it's hard to trade the market, but that's lumber. Check this out. Oh, God. Well, lumber's unbelievable. I, I looked at that the other day. I was in shock. I normally see it in the 300s. Exactly. You know, it's, it's, it's a real powerhouse. And basically what it's saying is, hey, <clears throat> you know, there's a housing shortage. The merchants are buying lumber. Costco is buying lumber. Home mm -hmm. Depot is buying lumber. And the demand has been huge. And here it is. Unfortunately, trading just a few hundred contracts a day, if you get hurt really bad, just goes limit up limit down almost every day. Now there's, um, if you can put up LL for people who do stocks, you know, I Remember thought that this thing- Lumber liquidators. Yeah. Now you got the silver and gold liquidators, but this is lumber. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that doesn't mean they're short because they're liquidating, you know. But no, it, it went way down and then it's yep. uh, turned up here very nicely. But I'm wondering, you know, why it's not going more? Because in 2013, 14, the darn thing was at a 105. I'll tell you why. <clears throat> They've got some fundamental problems regarding where they get their lumber from. Uh -huh. kind of, but the, 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 best, the best ETF for lumber is called Wood, no surprise, W-O-O-D. I'll bring right. it on the screen, which I'm sure you know. Here you go. It'll move almost tick for tick with lumber futures or CUT, C-U-T, which is another one for lumber. Here you go. And again. But is the lumber prices, uh, are? The, I mean, you know, when I see almost 700, is that a stretch number? And is it really uh, looking to the sell side at some point? Well, the bottom line is commercial. You got any, diver you got any divergences on the lumber? Let's take a look at the chart. Yeah, because I mean, the first thing I said was, how did it, wow, 700 almost. Yeah, let me, let me go back. If you wanted to buy lumber, you know, you probably did it already. <laughs> That's for sure. Here you go. One second, Jim. And here's the chart. And oh, yeah, there's a powerful divergence. Here it is, new high in price today. Yeah. Without a new high in the indicator right over here. So we've got a sell trigger down here. If yeah. and when it triggers, it's going to be a pretty significant short side. This was similar to the bellies going limit up, limit down all the time, <laughs> That's wasn't right. it? Because exactly. somebody told me there was like two guys in Chicago uh, with a bottle of Budweiser that they were the <laughs> they was the clearing firm right there, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I could tell you some pork belly markets. There's pork belly stories you wouldn't believe. <laughs> um okay now uh what about this uh i'll tell you one, another one that uh, seems to be pretty popular with the boys is uh, natural gas natural gas just a couple of days ago gave us a seasonal buy tr trigger and a technical buy trigger i'm going to put up the chart right now there's pretty good little etf and lumber ung which i'm sure you're aware of yeah but let me bring it up on the screen here Chenier. yeah well, UMG is a natural gas ETF. Oh, what is it? EMG? No, no. Uh, UMG. UMG. I got you. Uniform. And what do you call it? What do you call it just went into the storage business on natural gas? Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, the, yeah the, the natural gas ETF is UMG, United November Golf. And here's the chart. Here's your buy trigger. Your buy setup support at the bottom of the chart. But the thing that's really nice about natural gas is the seasonal between now and December is very reliable. So there's a big seasonal move coming here. And it's, it's part of company with some of the other energy markets. So it's pretty good. Another one that uh, wasn't home when I went over there was um, a heating oil contract. Yeah. Are, are they stopped trading that too? Oh no, here's the heat right over here. Well, they have a different symbol for it or? You know, it's HL. Let me bring it up on the screen. H02057. So this is tis the season, right? You betcha. Here it is. Here's the heating oil. Okay. Been in a beautiful uptrend. And of course, you've got our Bob on leaded gas, similar chart to the heating oil. Been a big 
big move with the eight ball. You know, you would think that there could be something because of the rigs being closed and then the fracking being done and then OPEC being fairly cooperative with the supplies. And as I look around the freeways, I mean, people are out there driving around. Oh, yeah. So, uh, and they're not, dri they're not flying anywhere. So, you know, I'm sure they're <laughs> driving, driving as much as they can. So I, I see that the demand should be there. But of course, you have to balance that option against the lack of demand from jet fuel, right? Well, that's true. That's a big bite. Yeah. That's a big bite. Um, yeah, here's one that I was thinking uh, might have seen its uh, day. Uh, the Euro. It went, uh, I loved it at 110 because that's when the moving averages were crossing. But up at 120, I thought that was too much too soon. Yeah, we are in sync. Let me show you the Euro. Absolutely. The thing that's interesting about the Euro, hang on one second, Jim, let me get it up on the screen here. Here's the Euro. Again, a beautiful uptrend, but here's what happened. Notice as we were making new highs in the euro, mm -hmm. the indicator at the bottom of the screen, by the way, is small trader sentiment. So when the small trader is very bullish, like they were up here, it precedes the top. When the small trader is very bearish, as they were down here, that precedes the bottom. So right now, the small trader has been too bullish. So this correction that we've got going on right now in the euro was expected and very, very um, reasonable considering the, the market sentiment. And, and uh, the, other current, the other currencies, you know, seem to be just hanging in there, you know, or me doing, meandering. Yeah, doing pretty much the same, but we did have a bottom in the dollar. And, and let me show it to you. So here is the dollar index futures, which goes along with, at least over the short term, higher interest rates. Here's the dollar index futures. And there's our low developing in the dollar index, right on schedule. What else should we look at, Jim? Uh, I'm just trying to take a look here. Uh, well, you know, um, what you might do is uh, take a look at uh, the NASDAQ. And because, uh, you know, there are some people with the Elliott Wave Theory, and they're thinking that uh, in this Q, uh, Q3, we're going to have a, a major top in um, – in the an unwind trade they're going to unwind the gold and silver which they started to do they're going to unwind the euro which they may be starting to do it's supposed to unwind the, the tech trade and move the money over to the 14 p trade which is your uh, value you and know so, with all due respect to the other wave guys yeah. they've been saying the same thing for the last 14 years <laughs> and if you say it long enough a broken clock right there used to be a guy named Franz Pick who ran ads in the newspapers in Chicago. For 17 years, he ran the same ad every Sunday. And the ad read, the dollar will be destroyed. Eventually, he was right. But by right. then, Franz Pick was dead. So the, right. bottom line, the bottom line is, hey, you know, yeah, we're going to get reactions. But look, here's a, here's a the triple Q chart. It's the yeah. normal chart. Everything's yeah. acting the way it should. Yeah. The weekly chart on the triple Qs, the beautiful bullish situation. Uh, so, hey, you know, we may get reactions to back to the bottom of the channel, but the question is, will it be normal and reasonable? And right now the answer is yes. Yeah, I mean, I think people are just saying that, uh, is it possible? First of all, I think the whole world thinks the market's going to rally going into the election. Now, that, that obviously is a very um, unbalanced uh, viewpoint when you have that kind of popularity. True. Sure. And, uh, and the other thing is, is the distance between some of these stocks and their moving averages. Sure. I mean, uh, I think Amazon's 200 days in the low 2000s. Yeah, that's right. You know, so I think, uh, you know, I don't think it's totally out of school that with this kind of fever and participation uh, that um, there could be some unwind. You know, and I think that's all people are saying. It's not like, uh, you know, Amazon will never go up again or Apple will never go up again. I think what they're saying basically is they could cool off for a while as the money rotates over to things that are not, you know, 40 to 1 PE or, or 100 to 1 PE. Yeah, I think it's really important at times such as these to determine where you are as an investor or a trader. Exactly. If you're, you know, if you're a trader, it's been a beautiful market. I have never seen a market this good. It's so, excuse me, so damn easy to make money. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I say to people, if you're not making some money in this market, you will never make money. Yeah. As an investor, you have to be really careful not to get spooked 
because the moves are going to be big. And if you've got money on the side that you've taken out of the market, get ready and put it back to work because there will be opportunities coming. We've, we've got such a politically charged, so new, news, news um, rich market with all the geopolitical stuff that's going on. There's so many opportunities. You just have to decide what you want to do and do it and try not to be all over the place. Well, and you also, in the decades, you don't always have a administration who believes the um, stock market is the scorecard. Yeah, that's um, true. And so, in other words, we've got a situation where if they can get the uh, S and P to uh, thirty six hundred, but they're still twenty million unemployed, they're going to still consider it a win. True. And can so, you, in that environment, you don't debate. I mean, you don't debate politics. You get on the horse and you ride it in the direction that the yeah, flow is. Exactly. And, and I think you, you may. Well, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jim. No, I was just going to say, and then you do your politicking after you've cast your check. You know? <laughs> That's true. A lot of people are getting spooked by Joe Biden's latest proposal to pay tax on open profits. Have you heard about that one? Oh, no. But I also heard the other side of the coin where we're going to cut uh, capital gains tax from 20 down to like, what, five? <laughs> I'm okay with that. Oh, no, everyone. I listen, you know, obviously, if you have uh, money in the thing, it's a, all this stuff that he talks about is extremely good. But you want to be able to go to the store without having a, a mob come after you. <laughs> True enough. True you enough. Know, I, I want to be able to go down the street without wondering who's going to jump me you know, because 90% of the people have no money. You know? Yeah, it's pretty scary out there. Yeah. So let's see, what didn't we cover? We covered the metals, we looked at the grains, we looked at yeah. the beans, we looked at the, uh, the softs. What about the cotton? Is the cotton, uh, you know, because that's part of the softs and we didn't talk about it. And yeah. I was noticing it in the 60s. I don't think it's going to go to the 40s. So um, could it possibly, you know, be another sleeper? Because that's yeah. what those softs are. They're kind of sleeping and, yeah. and looks like they're getting ready, you know? Well, according to the chart, cotton has turned bullish, support at the bottom of the channel. There's our two complete bars above the top of the channel. There's our Williams indicator above its moving average. So cotton is in a bull trend. And no surprise there because cotton is very closely related to economic activity. And basically what it's saying is whoever the big buyers in cotton are, would be, which would be clothing manufacturers, they're basically saying, hey, we're not concerned that the economy is going to go to hell in a handbasket. We believe our, our business will come back strong. And so, again, a good leading indicator of economic activity here. Maybe we could jump on some of the, um, you know, the, the high tech stuff and not the high tech, but the, you know, the stuff that moves the markets and, and see if the, where would be a good entry potential on things like, well, we talked about Apple. Yeah, we talked about Netflix. Here's Netflix. Yeah, on Netflix, sure. Here's Netflix. And, you know, in terms of my work, you can't get a better looking chart than this. It's just so absolutely beautiful. It follows all the rules comes down to the bottom of the channel, goes back up to the top of the channel. It's just absolutely beautiful chart. And even on the daily, although not as stable, it's still got many opportunities. So right now, Netflix is hanging in the balance. What do I mean by that? One bar below the bottom of the channel today. Williams crosses below its moving average today. So we have a classic sell setup, which means tomorrow, Super important day, by which I mean this. If we have another complete bar below the bottom of the channel and Williams remains in its current configuration, Netflix has topped and will see significantly low prices. The other side of the coin, most likely a great buying opportunity in Netflix developing tomorrow. Yeah, Netflix is a, a company that me personally, uh, you know, because of their uh, cash burn on, on creating content and all that kind of stuff, you know, I'd, I'd be more interested in like, uh, what does Facebook look like? Because they have 2.6 billion users every month. Yep. I mean, how can that company not end up making money? You know, that's, that's true. And here's Facebook, Jim. Yeah. So uh, where would be a, a reasonable bargain in there? Somewhere 242? As a, well, as a trader, 252 tomorrow. As an investor, bottom of the weekly channel, which would be 231. Yeah, that would be, I mean, I don't think there's too much wrong at looking at that. And uh, how about Microsoft? Here we go. As I recall, the chart looks very similar to Apple. Here's Microsoft intermediate term trend and the daily trend. Microsoft, again, right now below support, very similar to Apple. And the longer term uh, 
the area, monitor. maybe the 190 area. It would be about 203. Yeah, so it's getting close there. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, Tesla has been a fantastic company, but, uh, you know, is it a situation where you can't just uh, sell credits to people and make uh, a living? At some point, you got to sell the cars, too? Well, there's a, there's, there's a Tesla chart, so it's looking, still looking pretty good if you can get it at the bottom of the channel. Yeah. And I will say this, I love the car, but I don't mm -hmm. trade the stock. Yeah, well, I just, uh, when I heard the earnings report and then I saw that uh, uh, they get these uh, credits because uh, they, um, you know, they make a certain amount of electric cars and their admissions are yep. wonderful, yep. but then yep. Ford and GM can't do it. So they have to buy from Tesla these credits so they could pass the test. It sounds like something that people do at a bad, <laughs> col at a bad college. It's, it's, it's hard to imagine. It's, it's, very, it's very difficult for me conceptually to think about that. Let's look at some of the other darlings like NVIDIA. I mean, obviously they're going to be into all the games and the consoles and, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, is there yeah, a that, that market's exploded because of, of course, so many people are staying home. They've got nothing better to do. Yeah. So there's the NVIDIA chart. And the one thing to notice, not a surprise, is how similar most of these charts are. So given yeah. their similarity on the way up, they're going to look similar on the way down. And let me point out one more thing. The characteristic of the moving average channel, when the channel begins to widen as it did over here, that tends to precede a surge to the upside. And you'll see this on many moving average channel charts. So what else did we have? We got, we got what, four minutes left? So maybe yeah, we Yeah, I that think at the four minutes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let you reintroduce yourself. And then if you have any uh, webinars coming up or, uh, other, uh, you know, services that uh, people can get a hold of you on. Uh, this would be a great time to go through it. Yeah, Jim, just uh, go to my website, jakebernstein.com. I've got some webinars coming up. Everything I do is strictly educational, by which I mean no tricks, no gimmicks, no looks like, no interpretation. Everything is out there. The rules are clear, and we make them work. I use a basic approach called setup, trigger, follow through, which I developed over the years. And hey, you know, we're not perfect. We do good. We're accurate. We go for low risk and high profit potential with good accuracy. And uh, you know, just follow my work and see what you think. Now, the other thing is, is um, you have some ideas that you share with people. But if people have ideas that they'd like to have you run through the mill, uh, is that possible too? Sure, just send me an email. I won't steal the idea. I've got my own and I, I don't need your ideas, but I'll be yanked yeah, running through the mill, but which I mean, check them out and test them. Yeah, exactly. That kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I think that's a very good value. You know, Jake, you've been doing this for a very long time and obviously uh, your knowledge and experience is uh, very extensive. So that's not even a question. And there's a lot of people getting into trading for the first time, as you know, and or uh, dusting the rust off um, <laughs> you know, because they haven't done it in a long time. So, you know, this is a good uh, value added situation if they can contact you and uh, see how your work could uh, be used as a tool and in, in they're trying to make some money. And you as well, Jim, check your, what about your stuff? Yeah, I have a, a weekly uh, newsletter that I come out with. I call it a weekly update. And, uh, you know, back in uh, March and April, we were talking about tech and semis. And then in, uh, you know, uh, April, May, we were talking about some value. Then in uh, May and June, we were talking about those metals. So we've had some pretty good ideas. And again, uh, go to optionprofessor.com and put your email in. And then you're in the queue. Every week, you'll get a, the a free weekly update. And again, we cover a wide variety of stuff, just like we did at this meeting. So uh, again, uh, just go to optionprofessor.com and, and put that email in. Uh, David, I'm going to throw it back to you. Uh, Jake, it's always a pleasure. And pleasure, I hope we can yeah. do it again soon. And uh, we'll see what the next uh, month or two brings as we go into this election. And hopefully, we can get on board, uh, You know, have another one of these meetings before the election. And remember, Jim, wear your mask. Ask, wash your hands, don't shake hands, don't touch your face, don't touch anybody else's face. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> we're we're going to go with uh, the Jake Bernstein uh, solution to the current uh, crisis. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jake. And uh, David, thanks, back Jim. to you. Yep. Thanks, you. All right. thanks, guys. Lots thanks, of good info today. Have a good so, one. Stay uh, healthy. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, everyone. And, uh, uh, just a quick reminder for everyone, be sure to subscribe to Timing Research on YouTube and your favorite podcast network. Um, you can also go to timingresearch.com to get access to this or any of the past shows. 
Um, I'll get the, uh, the recording of this one posted as soon as I can. And uh, so just want to thank my guests again for today, uh, Jake Bernstein of trade-futures.com or jakebernstein.com and the option professor of optionprofessor.com. Thanks everyone. Thanks David. Thanks Jim. Take care everyone. Be healthy.